everyone and welcome back. It's Gina from orchidandopal.com and today I have a new tutorial to share with you from the contents of the recent Eureka Crystal Beads collection called Sweet Romance. It came out last month and a few weeks ago I also shared with you this bracelet in the pink colorway which was something I came up with using some of the contents of that collection. I'll leave the link to that collection right down below the video, but in case it's sold out or if you want to pick up the materials separately, I also have the materials list located down there as well. And of course, Eureka Crystal Beads has all these materials in different colors so you can have fun picking and choosing whatever you'd like to use. As a brief rundown though, we'll be using the size three millimeter crystal cup chain, and this is in the Krakowski brand. Also two different sizes of round seed beads. Both of the ones I'm using today are Toho, but you can use any consistent higher quality seed beads, such as Miyuki or something similar. You'll need the size 11 and the size 15 as well as some Miyuki Tila beads and some three by two millimeter crystal rondelles. Here's a closer look at this bracelet before we get started. You can see that cup chain is running directly through the center of the bracelet. And if you are newer to bead weaving, you might want to just watch this tutorial in full first and also be patient with yourself because when you introduce cup chain to bead weaving projects, sometimes it can produce a few more challenges if you're not used to working with it, especially since it can have a tendency to move around a little bit until you get everything tacked down and in place. And that's not to discourage anyone from giving this a try, that is just to say, take your time and have fun. Here's a look at the base of this bracelet. You can see the Tila beads are what make up the very bottom and then we'll be embellishing all around and on top of those. And you'll be able to make this really cool cup chain bracelet that has some great movement to it and a lot of flexibility while also keeping that cup chain perfectly in place. So I think you'll really enjoy this one once it's all done. And while there are tons of different ways you can finish this bracelet off, I'll just be showing you a basic way to complete this design with some additional beads and a toggle clasp. The bracelet we'll be making today will come to about seven and a half inches long, and I'm specifically using a six inch length of cup chain. That's because in the collection we got 12 inches or a foot's worth, so I cut it directly in half. That way you'd have enough to make two bracelets if you wanted to, if you were working with a segment that's a foot long. Down below I'll also let you know how many crystals specifically are on the segment of cup chain that I'm using because I think that might help you too. And if you wanna make this bracelet longer or shorter, you can definitely do that and just adjust some of the steps accordingly. For my beading thread today, I'll be using the six pound .006 inch diameter fire line. And we'll also be using a segment of thread with a beading needle on either side. I'll be using size 11 needles because we're going to be going through some 15 OC beads several times and that will make it easier with slightly smaller needles. And one other thing, just keep in mind that you'll probably need to add some beading thread to your work as you go and just pick up wherever you leave off with the steps, just like you'll see today. So at this point, you can go ahead and gather up your materials and add a beading needle to either side of a comfortable length of beading thread, and we will jump into this tutorial. All right, so we get started with a needle on both sides of our thread, and first we want to pick up one of our Tila beads and string that on. And holding on to both needles, I'm just letting that Tila bead go to the center of the beading thread. Now I'm just gonna straighten out these needles and holding that Tila in place, I'm actually gonna sew with one side back through the same hole of the Tila that we had gone through before. And that's just to hold that in place while we move on with the length of our beadwork. So that thread's gonna get hidden as we move on, but this will at least help to keep our thread centered as we go. And our next step is to pick up three of our seed beads on one side and a tila, and we can go ahead and pull those down. And then with your other side, pick up three seed beads as well. and then cross through the same hole of the new Tila bead. So I'm just gonna go down through that way. 
and then pull on both sides. And that's what we have so far. And then one more time, we're gonna cross through that teal bead, but this time going through the open hole. I'm gonna start with one side and then pick up the needle on the other side and go down through that next hole. And once again, pull everything tight. So we're gonna be repeating that step 20 more times. We'll do this one more time together. And again, that's to get about a seven and a half inch length and that's including the clasp portion. And I also wanna mention this part is going to end up shrinking up as we go. So you can't quite use the full length that this ends up being after we do this 20 more times. So keep that in mind. But let's do this one more time together, picking up three seed beads and a tila on one side. Going ahead and pulling that down. And then with the needle from our other side, we'll pick up three seed beads and then cross through the same hole of the new tila. And then pull on both sides of the thread and cross through the tila, going through the open hole this time. Now crossing through this way with the other needle. And again, pulling on both sides of the thread. So continue doing this until you have a total of 22 tila beads making up the base of your beadwork, and then we will continue on at that point with the next steps. And welcome back everyone. So you should have something that looks similar to this at this point. And with the next step, we're gonna be picking up with our size 15 O seed beads and also just with one of our beading needles. So I'm gonna leave one of them just hanging out on the other end of the bracelet. And with the other side, I'm going to sew back through the Tila bead heading towards the other end of the bracelet. And then I'm gonna go through the next two seed beads that I get to. And what we're gonna do now is insert five of our 15 O's in between each of these Tila sections. And we're gonna be attaching those to the central 11 O's. So let's pick up five of our 15 O's. And we're just gonna be crossing through the central seed bead on the other side. So I'm going down through that one and then catching those five seed beads again and pull. And now I'm gonna go down through the 11 O on this side, through the other side, the opposite side that I started at. And now you can see our 15 O's are in place and they're centered in between that section. And we can just continue to sew down through the next seed bead and down through the next tila. And then up through the next hole of the same tila and then over through the next two seed beads that we get to. And this is where we'll do the exact same thing. Just picking up five 15 O's going down through the central seed bead on the other side, pulling it tight, sewing through the five seed beads again. And then sewing through the opposite side of that first 11 O that we went through and pulling that tight. And then we'll just continue on repeating that step all the way to the other side of the bracelet. And this thread is starting to get a little bit shorter, so I'm sure I'm going to need to add a piece of thread at that point. And from here on out, you'll pretty much be working with one piece of beading thread and one needle at a time. So wherever you have to leave off, just add more thread and continue on with the steps as we go. And keep going until you have the 15 -0 sections in between each of your Tila bead sections and we'll meet back once we get to the other side of the beadwork. 
Hey everyone, I actually have a brand new piece of beading thread that I'm about to add on, so I figured I would just film doing that in case it helps anyone else out or you just want to see how I'm going about that. I've already knotted off the working thread I was using, and I stopped at about this point. So what I like to do sometimes is just back up a little bit from where I was, and I'll just sew into the beadwork. I'll go into this Tila bead, for example. This is just one way to do it. And I'll leave myself about a five inch tail or so, and this way I can just weave this side in with another needle. With my thumb and my forefinger, I'm going to hold that in place, and I'm just going to sew underneath this thread bridge and make a half hitch knot with the new thread right there next to that bead. Then I'll sew down through the next hole of the half tila. So I'm just weaving this in a little bit and following the thread path that I was going through before. I'll go through the next two seed beads that I get to. And I'll go up through these five 15 O's. And I will then go through the next two seed beads to the left and I'm back to where I left off with my old thread. And at that point, I can just continue on to the area that I need to get to next to continue on with this step. So I have my new thread ready to go, and with this tail thread, I'm just going to put a needle on this side and weave this back into the beadwork a little bit and probably make another half hitch knot somewhere along the way with this side too. So that's all there is to that, and again, I'll meet you once we get to the other side of the bracelet. And welcome back everyone. So at this point, we are ready to start tacking down our cup chain, and we're gonna do that in a really methodical way so that everything stays even and has just the right tension for our bracelet. This is the needle I have been working with to add those additional 515-0 sections. And I just ended by coming out of this final Tila bead right here. And I still have the thread hanging out on the other side with the needle. You're welcome to pick up with that one later. But let's just start from where we are. And we'll begin by just placing that cup chain on top of our bead base. And you'll notice that the cup chain is shorter than our beadwork itself. And that's because, like I said, it's going to be scrunching up underneath, but yet it will end up fitting this length of cup chain perfectly, which I just counted and it comes to 41 crystals in total on the segment that we need. And I think I have 42, so I might end up trimming off one, but I'd rather have one extra than be short one. So now positioning this so that it's a little bit easier for me to work with, I'm going to be holding with my thumb, the first crystal from the cup chain right there on top of this teal bead that I'm coming out of, coming out of the hole that's closest to the other side of the beadwork. So I still have one over there that's open. And what we want to do is catch the section in between the two rhinestones with a piece of thread, just like that. And we're going to sew up through the same hole of the teal bead. And as that loop gets smaller, we want it to catch right in between those first two crystals of the cup chain, just like that. We'll be coming back from the other direction to tack this down evenly from the other side so we can maintain equal tension on both. But for now, just with this side, we're going to continue on. You can sew through the next 3110 seed beads. Then sew down through the next Tila bead. And it gets easier as you go because you won't have this loose piece of cup chain hanging there. But like I said, I just like to use my thumb to separate out those crystals as we move along. And right now my thread is coming down out of the first hole of the next Tila bead. And we're going to be tacking down that next section 
in between the next two cup chain crystals. So I like to just take my thread and start to train it to go right in that section where we want it to land. And that way when we sew back down through that same tila bead, it's already starting to go in that direction as that loop closes down on top of that bar section. Now we have both areas tacked down. And we'll move along. We're gonna sew now up through the next hole of the same tila bead. And again, just methodically, we're going to be pulling this piece of thread in between that next crystal section and sewing up through that same hole of the tila bead. And pull, tightening that loop down on top of the section in between the crystals. So now we've got those first three tacked down, and you're gonna do this all the way to the other side. So once again, you can continue sewing through those next three 11 O's, then sew down through the next tila bead. Make sure you get the very next section that hasn't been tacked down yet, so you'll be kind of pulling that cup chain down because we've done these three and this is the next section we need to tack down. So I'm just going to, again, train my thread to start going in that space. And then I'm gonna sew down through the heel of bead right there and make sure that loop of thread catches in between that next section and also doesn't get stuck on the prongs. And now I'll sew up through the tila bead and we'll tighten down the next section the same way. Going up through that tila bead again and letting that loop tighten over top. So keep going in that manner, continuing to kind of scrunch up your beadwork to get to the very next crystal section. And once we get to the other side, you're gonna have this really nice and even tacked down crystal cup chain that spans the length of your beadwork. Once you get to the other side, that's where we can meet back and we'll continue on. And welcome back everyone. So hopefully your bracelet is shaping up nicely and you have something like this. I did end right before that last section of five 15 0 seed beads. So to get these sides even, I'm gonna trim off that first crystal, but I'm not gonna do that yet because it's kind of hanging on at that end nice and even. I've got the little piece of thread that has been sitting here hanging off this tila bead, and I'm just gonna keep that remaining in place and continue on with my working thread, which I did add more onto. And I have that coming out of this tila. I just secured that last crystal section. And what I'm gonna do is continue on through those next three seed beads. And I'm just gonna be turning around. So I'm gonna go down through that next tila there. Turn that around, go through the three seed beads in this direction back towards our beadwork. And now I'm just going to return in the other direction, tacking down the cup chain again, but just doing that from the opposite direction. So we really are gonna have this tacked down well, and this is going to keep an even tension on everything all the way down the bracelet. So continue doing what we already did. Just tack everything down now on the other side, making sure this is nice and tight as you go. And once you've done that, we will meet back at the other end of the bracelet. And welcome back again. So I have stopped just before getting to the section between the last two crystals, because again, I figured that I'm going to be cutting that last crystal off, which I'm going to do right now, taking my flush cutters, Actually, I'm gonna go from the other direction. Just carefully clipping off that last one. Now both sides will be even. 
And now I'm gonna sew through the next two seed beads. So I'm coming out of the central one right there, that 11-0. And now we'll start with our next step, which is going to be to add some more of our 15-0 seed beads. And on this end only, we're gonna pick up six of our 15-0s. And going over to the opposite side of our bracelet, go through the middle seed bead on the other side. And then pull that. And you see those are sitting right there on the side of our crystal. Now we wanna pick up four more 15 O's. You can pull those down. And in this step, we're going to separate those. Two are going to sit on one side of the crystal, and then two are going to sit on the other. And this will be more secure once we move on to the next step after this, and you'll see what I mean. So don't worry too much if some of these four seed beads slide back and forth from one side to another. But in general, try to get these trained so that two will sit on one side and two will sit on the other in and around the bar section in between the two crystals. And then you're gonna sew through that central 11-0 again. Hold that with your thumb and your forefinger so those 15-0s stay wrapped around the crystal and pull nice and tight. And then go around all of those beads again. So go back through all six of the 15-0s plus the central 11-0. Then go back through the four 15-0s, and you can go through two at a time if you want to. That important step, just holding everything in place with your thumb and your forefinger as you go. And then with this side, just this time, we're gonna be going through that third seed bead and heading in the other direction because we need to start heading towards the other side of our bracelet. Again, I'm just holding that and pulling tight. And now we can go up through our next Tila bead. Weave down through the next hole of that Tila bead. And sew through the next two 11 seed beads. Just like that. So I'm coming out of the central seed bead right there down at the bottom. And at this point, we're gonna be connecting four more 15 O's on either side of this crystal that we're sitting in front of. So we're gonna pick up four of our 15 O's. And just like we did before, we're gonna have two sitting on one side and two sitting on the other. So I'm just moving two of those over to the other side, and then I'm going to hold down my thread and pull. And while I hold all that in place, I'm gonna go through the central seed bead that's on the opposite side, that 11-0. Pull tight again, pick up four more 15-0s. Two on one side, then your thread goes in the next section in between the two crystals. And then two beads on the other side of that. And then this time we sew through the central seed bead and that next one that we get to. Pulling that tight again. And now we're in position to move on down our beadwork. Weaving through the next teal of bead again. Then sewing through those next two 11 O's. And just keep repeating what we already did, picking up four 15 O's. Two on one side. Hold your thread down in between the two crystals and two 15 O's on the other side. 
and sew through the 11-0 in the middle on the opposite side of your beadwork. Hold that together and pull tight, and then return to the other side, picking up four seed beads, holding that in place, and then sewing through the central 11-0 and the next one. And then just proceeding through the next teal of bead. So just take your time with that step and get your 15 O's in place around your crystals all the way down your bracelet in that manner. And then we'll meet back once we get to the other side and continue on. All right, so that is done all the way across the bracelet. And I ended right here, just like we did in the first section. I added six 15 O's around the very end of that last crystal. So make sure you do that to match the other side of your bracelet and go around that section twice to reinforce it. And then what you can do is take your working thread and go back through that central 11 O seed bead and also go through the next two 15 O's that you get to. Now what we're gonna do on this one side of the bracelet first is we're going to pick up one of our crystal rondelles and we're gonna sew through the next two 15 O seed beads that are on the other side of the next crystal. So just sew down through those and hold this and gently give that a pull and that sets that crystal in place. We'll be doing one other thing after this which will reinforce this even further. But with this addition of the crystals in each of these sections, that's going to help keep those two 15 O's separated on either side. So we just need to continue through the next 11 O. And now up through the next two 15 O's. And now we can add in another one of our rondelles. So we'll pick that up. And then sew down through the next two 15 O's on the other side of the next crystal. Hold that in place and pull. And again, we'll just keep sewing through our next 11 O and our next two 15 O's to get us to the point for our next rondelle, which we can pick up. And then just catch those next two 15 O's. So keep doing that till you get to the other side of your bracelet and then we'll meet back at that point again. All right, now once you get to the other side, you can continue sewing through the next 11 O and then sew through your Tila bead and then sew down through your next two 11 O's. And then the next two 15 O's to get in place to add the crystal rondelles to the exact same spots just on the opposite side of the bracelet. Once again, you'll pick one up and sew down through those two 15 O's on the other side of the crystal and then pull that tight. And now continue doing that and we'll meet back when you get to the other side. All right, everyone. So we are getting close to the end of our bracelet and we have our crystal rondelles in place now and we just need to continue on and go through the six 15 O's on the end. We're gonna turn around one more time and complete one more step all around the bracelet before we finish off the ends. So also go through the next 11 O. And at this point, all we need to do is pick up one 15 O, then sew through the rondelle, pick up a 15 O, and then sew through the 11 O. 
the one that we've been connecting to that's in the center. And continue doing that all the way down the bracelet. So again, one 15 -0, and just go through the rondelle. One more 15 -0, and through the central 11 -0, and pull. Just make sure your tension is staying nice and even all the way down the piece. It should be nice and flexible and keep going. And when you get to the other side, again, you'll just keep sewing through those last six seed beads to turn around, then go through the 11-0 and do the exact same thing on this side. Once you have all of those little 15 O's in place around each rondelle and you make it to the other end of your bracelet, that's where we'll meet back one last time and finish off the ends. All right, and now back again, all of the beadwork is in place and I brought in the blue bracelet so you could see how I added a little bit of length on either side of our beadwork. That's because the cup chain section's about six inches. I added about another inch in beadwork with an additional two tilas attached on both sides. And then of course we have our clasp. So this is another area where you can adjust the length of your bracelet to make it either shorter or longer than the initial example piece. I'll go ahead and show you how I created the example though, and we'll do one side together, and you'll pretty much do the exact same thing on the other side. This is where you might also have that original thread still in place. So depending on how much you have left, you can either continue working with the same thread you were working with or tie that one off and use this piece of remaining thread to continue. That's up to you. And I think I'm just gonna secure my working thread so that we only have one that's hanging out. So I'm just gonna make a half hitch knot there, go through that Tila bead, go under that thread bridge, make another half hitch knot. And then I'll continue through a few more beads just to secure that a little bit better. Go up there. And I'll trim off that excess. Now I'll just put a needle on that thread that has been hanging out over there. And I'm coming out of this outer hole of the Tila bead on that end. I'm going to pick up another Tila. And then with those side by side, I'm going to go up through the one that I was coming out of again to bring those two together. And then I'll go down that one, up the same one, but through the outer hole. And I'll pick up one more Tila bead. Go up through the Tila bead that I was just coming out of to get those side by side. Go down the new one and then return by weaving back and forth through the holes of those Tila beads so that I'm coming out of that first one and the hole that's closest to the other beadwork. So now that I'm coming out of that, I'm gonna pick up a rondelle and go through the next hole of the Tila. I'll pick up another rondelle and go through the first hole again. Now we have a rondelle on both sides. Then sew through the rondelle again and the Tila. And then here I'm going to pick up a 15 0, an 11 0, and a 15 0, and go down through the first hole of the next Tila. I'll repeat that again, 15-0, 11-0, and 15-0. Then back up through the previous Tila, just like that. And then sew through the seed beads that you get to next, as well as down through the Tila. And then in that section, I'll be adding in a rondelle going through the next hole of the Tila. Picking up another rondelle and sewing down the previous hole. Then I'll go through the rondelle and up through 
the teal a bead. And once again here in between these two tealas, I'll pick up a 15-0, an 11-0, and a 15-0. I'll go down the next tila and do that again. And now I'll sew through those three seed beads I get to next. And down through the tila. And then I'll pick up a rondelle and sew through the next hole of that tila. Pick up another rondelle. Return through the previous hole. And then go through the rondelle again. And then pick up six 15 O's and sew through the rondelle on the other side, as well as the next 11 O, rondelle, 11 O, and rondelle. I just skipped over those 15 O's. Then I'm going to go through the next 11 O. Then I'm going to go down through the central four 15 O's on that end and turn around. And this time going through the 11 O on that side. And again through the rondelles and the 11 O's along the side of the tilas. And then just to secure those 15 O's to the tila bead, I'm going to sew through the next tila, then return through the six 15 O's and go through the tila again. And at this point, if you'd like to, you can sew a clasp directly in whichever type of clasp you'd like to use. You can also add another strip of 15 O's directly next to this one, which I think I'll do, going through those six again. Because that'll just strengthen that section further. You can add a jump ring to that section of beads directly, and that will allow you to be able to change out your clasp if you want to. So I'm just sewing that in sort of a ladder stitch fashion. Because connecting to the two strips of beads will be stronger than just one, I figure. And I'll go through those new six and also connect those to that last teal of beads. So I'm going to go through there. And then back up the first six. And then you can just make a half hitch knot, continue on through some beads. And I'll make another knot right here. And one more. And then I'll trim that excess off. And then you can do the exact same thing on the other side to match this. So you can just back up the video and do the same thing over there, adding a piece of thread on that side if you need to. At this point, I'm going to add a jump ring to those two strips of seed beads, as well as my clasp on this side and the other that I'm going to finish up. And then we can admire our work. 
So here is the end of our bracelet with the clasp in place. Just one way that you can do that, adding a jump ring to either side and then your clasp. And that's all there is to it. So I hope you enjoyed this sparkly project. Once again, you can find all of these materials inside the Sweet Romance Beading Collection by Eureka Crystal Beads. And even though it might be sold out, you can still get your hands on all these products separately in their shop, as well as these materials in lots of other colors. So be sure to have fun with that. And as a reminder, all the links for that information will be listed right down below the video, as well as the quantities you'll need of each of these items. Well, if you decide to make one of these, you'll have to let me know down in the comments below. I always love to hear from you and hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did, definitely give it a big thumbs up. Also subscribe to my channel while you're here if you haven't already, because I'd love to have you back. And also be sure to share this project with your other beating friends. That's all I have for now. I hope to see you all again real soon though. And until next time, I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day. And as always, happy beating.